Hi everyone, welcome back. I have another rarity and thrift store find, rescued from the masses, on tap for today. We go all the way back to 1995, and Sonic the Hedgehog had been rolling on the Sega Genesis for a few years, and was popular. So of course, then came the TV cartoon, and ultimately, the books to go with them. Today, we read one of those many adventures of Sonic, in a book called, Up Against the Wall. And as always, here we have only the finest quality children's stories read by the finest quality narrator. Just kidding, but the stories are fantastic and hopefully you will enjoy these renditions. In the great forest of the planet Mobius, the brave freedom fighters were listening to Antoine, their record keeper. As you can see by this chart, Antoine reported, Dr. Robotnik and his bully Badniks have been quiet lately. Maybe he's ready to give up, piped in Tails, the two-tailed fox. Sonic the Hedgehog, the lightning-quick leader of the freedom fighters, tapped his foot impatiently. He knew that the evil genius Dr. Robotnik wouldn't stop until everyone on the planet was roboticized. We'll be hearing from him soon, Sonic warned. Robotnik still has plenty of tricks up his metal sleeve. You can count on that. Suddenly, a muffled boom sounded from far away. Y'all hear that thunder? asked Bunny Rabot, the half-robot freedom fighter. The ground shook as another boom followed. But there isn't a cloud in the sky, observed Rotor. Sounds like trouble, Princess Sally said. Sorry, Antoine. I'll have to look at your charts later, said Sonic, and the blue blur streaked away. A few seconds later, Sonic was at the gates of Robotropolis. He stopped in front of the giant smoke-belching machine that was slamming pieces of metal into the ground with loud and steady booms. It seemed to be building a huge wall. I don't like the looks of this machine, Sonic said to himself. Or the smell. Phew! The rest of the freedom fighters caught up to Sonic. They watched in horror as the machine scooped up trees from the great forest and replaced them with a wall. Well, well, what do you think it's for, Tails asked. I don't know, but it's making the ground shake like a Mobius quake, answered Sally. Suddenly, the evil Dr. Robotnik appeared with his wimpy assistant, Snively. Welcome to my construction site, Robotnik called. As you can see, Robotopolis is expanding. I knew you'd show your creepy face soon, Sonic said. Take your overgrown toy and go home. This will be my home, you pesky rodent, Robotnik replied. The wall upper 3000 is unstoppable. Before long, it will encircle the great forest with a giant wall. Then, I'll set a huge dome over it to keep out the annoying sun. Allow me to demonstrate, Robotnik continued, pulling up a flower and covering it with his hard hat. Without sunshine and fresh air, all the plants and trees will wither away, Sally said. Let's see how your bucket of bolts handles a sonic spin, the hedgehog said, launching himself at the mess-making monster. The freedom fighters gasped as Sonic bounced off the machine. Hey, that's smart, Sonic said as he brushed himself off. The only smart you'll ever have, Snively said with a sneer. It's only a matter of time now, Robotnik said. The great forest will be mine. We won't let y'all get away with this, said Bunny. My SWAT bots and buzz bombers will see to it that you don't interfere, Robotnik said, waving his hand. 
a swarm of badniks quickly appeared and began to chase the freedom fighters. Uh-oh, Tails said nervously. There's too many of them to fight. I suggest a hasty retreat, Antoine said as he ran away. Anton's right, shouted Sally. We need to go home and come back with a plan. Let's go. But Sonic wasn't ready to give in. Sally had to drag him away. The speedy freedom fighters easily scrambled to safely through an underground tunnel to the secret entrance of Knothole Village. In the meeting hall, the group discussed their strategy. That's the biggest and loudest machine Robotnik's ever made, Rotor said. My normally foolproof sonic spin didn't even dent that contraption, Sonic said. Maybe I should have had a bigger breakfast this morning. There's still time to help the animals escape the great forest before they're trapped inside the wall, Antoine said. But they won't be able to hide from Robotnik outside the forest, Sally said. Sonic jumped onto the table, a determined look on his face. We won't let it happen, he said. Bees need flowers, and birds need trees. And what would I be without hedges? Just a hog, Sally quickly answered. And we can't have that, Sonic exclaimed. Okay, team, I have an idea how to scrap Robotnik and his tree-crunching machine. Sonic zipped around the room, gathering up papers, paints, and brushes. But in order for my plan to work, he went on, we need a way to get rid of the SWAT bots. I know, said Sally. We can magnetize Robotnik's metal wall with Rotor's giant magnet. The wall will become a super magnet, and when the metal SWAT bots came close to the wall, zap, they'd be out of the picture. Great idea, Sally, Sonic said. And speaking of pictures, Bunny, we'll need you to draw some of your famous landscapes. How are pictures going to stop that machine? asked Antoine. The fake scenery will fool it into following a path we want it to take, answered Sonic. When I bounced off that bucket of bolts, I saw that its computerized eyes were following a route that Robotnik created for it. Later that day, Sonic, Antoine, and Sally pulled a heavy wagon with a chest of golden rings, the bait they hoped would trap Robotnik to the wall upper 3000. The wall is almost halfway around the great forest, Antoine exclaimed. We'll have to work quickly. Robotnik and Snively were busily planning future robot factories when they noticed the freedom fighters approaching. We want to make a deal, Robotnik, Sonic said. Your machine is just too tough for us to beat. If you stop building the wall, we'll give you this chest full of golden rings. It could be a trick. Snively whispered to Robotnik. But I'll be trickier, Robotnik whispered back. As soon as the chest is open, you check it for a trap. Then I'll command the SWAT bots to surround these troublesome freedom lovers. Okay, freedom flunkies, Robotnik said to Sonic with a big smile. It's a deal. Give me the chest, and I'll turn off the wall upper 3000. Robotnik and Snively moved closer to the chest of golden rings. Ha! The joke's on you, suckers, Robotnik said. I'll swipe the golden rings and take you all prisoner. Swap box, attack! Badniks appeared from everywhere. They surrounded the freedom fighters and backed them up against the wall. I know a better joke, Baldy, Sonic said, and then whistled loudly. At the signal, Rotor popped up from beneath the golden rings with his giant magnet. He flicked a switch and the magnet pulled him and the wagon right to the metal wall. Dr. Robotnik and his metal badniks were drawn onto the magneticized wall. They were stuck like bugs on flypaper. Antoine and Sally quickly pulled a net from the chest and dropped it over Robotnik's non-metallic lackey Snively. Now, it looks like you're up against the wall, Sonic shouted as he quickly reclaimed the golden rings. Maybe, but you still haven't stopped my unstoppable wall upper 3000, Robotnik taunted. Just watch, now it's up to tail, Sonic said and whistled again. The speedy fox zipped from behind a tree and darted in front of the massive wall upper 3000. 
He held Bunny's fake scenery in front of the machine's glaring electronic eyes. The wall upper may have been big, but it wasn't very smart. It was fooled by the pictures and zigged left and zagged right, then left again until it toppled over a cliff to its doom. Back at Knot Hill Village, the Freedom Fighters celebrated their victory. I wish I could have been there, Bunny said laughing. You would have stuck to the giant wall just like Robotnik, Sally said. Using my giant magnet was a great idea, Sally, Rotor said. How did you think of it? I hate to take all the credit, Sonic interrupted, but I'm sure it was my magnetic personality that inspired her.